So you've finally convinced your boss to take AI search visibility seriously, and you've invested in an AI visibility tracking tool, of which there are many. But, and don't be mad at me, what if I told you that the AI visibility data that you're tracking may be completely different from what your target buyers are seeing in the web interface of assistants like ChatGPT? And we can prove it. See, Surfer ran a 2000 prompt study across ChatGPT and Perplexity to show the difference between the data pulled from the APIs of these tools, which most AI visibility platforms use, and the web interface results, which is what 99% of the population uses. And the results between the two were pretty drastic. And it very well could be that you've been building your AI visibility strategy on data that doesn't represent what your target audience sees. So in this video, you'll learn the critical differences between the web interfaces of these AI assistants and their APIs, and how it could very well be tanking your AI visibility strategy, as well as what to do to fix it. My name is Matt Kenyon, and I work as a growth partner helping businesses get more traffic, leads, and sales from search and today I really need a haircut but more importantly we're gonna bust some AI visibility myths and maybe break some hearts along the way so don't worry I'll be gentle it all started when surfers own Michael Suski was at the Chiang Mai SEO conference after his talk an attendee asked him what's the real difference between scraping AI results from the web interface and using the API of AI assistants like ChatGPT. And Michael, to his credit, was honest and admitted that he didn't know. So he said he'd test it. And that same evening, he sent a scope over to Surfer's data science team. Three weeks and 2000 prompts later, they had an answer. And what they found directly impacts brands like yours looking to be found in AI search. But first, let's clear up a big misconception because I feel like a lot of people get tripped up here. There is no chat GPT API. What actually exists are APIs for specific models, GPT-4, GPT-4.1 mini, and so on. These are the brains behind ChatGPT, but they are not ChatGPT itself. And the same story applies to Perplexity. There's no Perplexity API that behaves exactly like the web interface. You get access to the underlying models like Sonar, Sonar Pro, Sonar Reasoning, but not the full Perplexity experience. So what's the difference? Well, you can think of the API as the raw model. It's the engine. ChatGPT, on the other hand, is the raw model plus a whole lot of extras layered on top. These include things like special instructions called system prompts, extra data feeds, interface logic, and likely some small secret adjustments that only OpenAI knows about. The API is like a screenplay. It's got all the makings of a great movie, but ChatGPT is like a finished film with the director's choices, the actor's delivery, the musical score, and the editing. It's the same story on paper, but a completely different experience in the theater. The whole point I'm trying to make here is that ChatGPT does not behave the same as the API, even when they're using the same exact underlying model. Now, if you're a developer building an app, I mean, the API is, is great. It gives you clean, structured responses, consistent formats, function calling, all the things you need to build reliable software, but if you're a marketer trying to monitor how your brand appears in AI tools that real people actually use, well, the API is not your friend. Web scraping, actually capturing the output shown in the ChatGPT or Perplexity interface, gives you everything the user sees. The final message, the formatting, the sources, all the extra logic layered on top. Okay, so we're clear on the difference, right? When we say scraped responses, we're referring to the exact output of the user-facing ChatGPT interface, and when we say API, we're referring to the output of the API. Cool. And the scraping shows you what your users would see while the API shows you something else. But how different is that something else really? Let's get into the study. 
So Surfer's data science team ran a thousand prompt executions on ChatGPT. They compared scraped results, again, what you actually see in the chat interface, against the API results from the same underlying model. And they even ran a second test using a leaked OpenAI system prompt that had been floating around GitHub just to see if that would close the gap. Spoiler, it didn't. The results were nearly identical either way. So what did they find? Well, let's start with the basics. First, response length. API responses averaged 406 words. Scraped responses, 743 words. That means your potential buyers can ask the ChatGPT interface the exact same question as the API and get an answer that's nearly twice as long. So right out of the gate, you're getting a fundamentally different output. Second, web search. Now here's where it gets interesting. If you've been watching this channel, you know we talk all about large language model web search, query fan out, and how we can optimize our content to influence those responses. Well, about 23% of those API responses didn't trigger a web search at all, usually when the response was under 100 words. Scraped results? Web search was triggered every single time with the prompts they tested, 100%. Third, sources. The API provided no sources in roughly 25% of cases. Scraped results always included sources. And when the sources were provided, scraped responses included about twice as many, 16 on average, compared to just seven from the API. Lastly, brand detection. The API failed to detect any brands about 8% of the time. Scraped results always identified brands. And interestingly, when brands were detected, the API actually identified more of them on average, 12 versus nine. But that doesn't really matter much if a quarter of your results are missing sources entirely. Now, all of this is interesting, at least if you're a nerd like me. But here's the question that really matters. Are the actual brands and sources the same? Because, follow me here, if API data and scraped data are just formatted differently, but they're pointing to the same brands and sources, then maybe it's not such a big deal, right? Wrong. Brand overlap between API and scraped results was only 24%. That means three out of four brands that appeared in real ChatGPT answers didn't show up in the API results at all. And sources, even worse, there's just a 4% overlap. So what does this mean? That means that if you're using API data to figure out which sources to target, you know, which websites to get mentioned on, which content to create, you're optimizing for sources that don't even appear in the answers that real users see. Vorte Korczynski, one of the data scientists at Surfer who ran this study, put it bluntly when he said, these results confirm that API responses differ very strongly from scraped responses. These differences are so explicit that monitoring responses from API as a proxy for your AI visibility is totally wrong. Totally wrong. His words, not mine, but based on the data, I'm inclined to agree. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, okay, that's ChatGPT, cool, but what about other platforms? Maybe this is just an open AI quirk. So, Surfer tested perplexity too. Same methodology, same prompt list, this time comparing the perplexity web interface against their API, which gives you access to models like Sonar and Sonar Pro. The results were remarkably similar to ChatGPT, Let's go over them. Again, first, response length. API responses averaged 332 words. Scraped responses came in at 433 words. Not as dramatic a gap as ChatGPT, but still a meaningful difference. Next, sources. API results returned about seven sources on average. Scraped results always included 10. Interestingly enough, the API sometimes missed sources entirely, which meant no response at all, which is kind of funny. The scraped interface never had that problem. Third, brand mentions. Now this one's interesting. About 5% of scraped responses actually omitted brand names in favor of more generic descriptions, things like a popular project management tool instead of naming the actual product. The API, on the other hand, typically included 10 or more brands while scraped responses averaged around six. So on the surface, you might think, hey, the API is actually giving me more brand data. That's 
better, right? Not so fast because once again, we ask the critical question, are the sources the same? And I'm sorry, they're just not. The source overlap between API and scraped results was just 8%. That means 92% of the sources perplexity actually shows to users in its interface, you know, these things right here, weren't in the API results. This isn't a chat GPT quirk. It's a pattern across both of the major AI search platforms we tested. The API and the real user experience, they're just fundamentally different. So what does this actually mean for you? Well, you can probably tell by this point that if you're doing any kind of AI visibility work, trying to get your brand mentioned in ChatGPT, Perplexity, or other AI tools, this data has some serious implications for your strategy. First, if you're using API data to decide which sources to target, you're probably targeting the wrong ones. Think about it, only 4% of sources overlapped in the ChatGPT study. That means 96% of the sources that actually appear in real ChatGPT answers weren't showing up in the API data at all. So if you've got a link building strategy or you're creating content designed to get cited by AI and you're basing those decisions on API data, you're essentially optimizing for like a parallel universe that your customers will never visit. Second, if you're tracking brand mentions via API, you're seeing a distorted picture. There's only 24% brand overlap in ChatGPT. That means, again, three out of four brands that show up in real answers are invisible in your API-based reports. Now, you might think you're losing to competitor A when competitor B is actually dominating the real results, or you might not think you're showing up at all when you're actually getting mentioned a ton. It's just not in the data that you're looking at. Third, Clean data is not the same as accurate data, so this is a very subtle trap. APIs feel more reliable, they're structured, they're programmatic, they plug nicely into dashboards, everything looks neat and tidy, but cleaner doesn't mean more accurate, at least not when it comes to understanding what real users actually see. The messy, scraped data with all its formatting quirks and interface logic, that's the truth. The clean API data is unfortunately a convenient fiction. Putting it bluntly, if your AI visibility data is wrong, your optimization strategy will be wrong too. You'll spend time creating content to get cited by sources that don't matter. You'll track metrics that don't reflect reality and you'll wonder why your AI visibility isn't improving when the real problem is that you were never measuring the right thing in the first place. So how do you fix this? Well, obviously we need to reference the data that most closely reflects what your users are seeing. There are two main ways to do this. You can conduct a manual AI audit where you physically open up a ton of incognito windows, you type in prompts you think your users are searching for and you study the results. Now, this isn't a bad exercise. The problem is that it's very time consuming, it's not at all scalable to a large number of prompts, and you essentially have to repeat it every time you want new data. Or you can invest in a tool like Surfer's AI Tracker that intentionally uses scraped data, not API data. See, when Surfer built their AI visibility monitoring tool, they made a deliberate choice to capture what users actually see not a proxy, not a convenient approximation, the real thing. AI Tracker monitors your brand across ChatGPT, Perplexity, Google AI Overviews, and other major AI platforms. It scrapes the actual interface responses, so you're seeing the same results your customers see when they ask these tools about your industry, your competitors, or your brand. It tracks your visibility over time, so you can see whether or not your efforts are actually moving the needle, and again, based on on real data, not API artifacts. And look, I, I get it, scraping is messy, it's hard. It's a lot harder than just hitting an API endpoint. It requires more infrastructure. There's a reason a lot of tools take this API shortcut. But as the study shows, the shortcut gives you the wrong answers. And if you're making strategic decisions based on those answers, it's not gonna go well. Surfer's philosophy here is simple. Good data is step one. They don't cut corners, they dig deep, Test thoroughly, as you've seen today, and make sure that both the data and the methods are rock solid. Because what's the point of tracking your AI visibility if the numbers you're looking at don't reflect reality? If you wanna see how your brand is actually showing up in AI search, not the API version, but the real thing, 
check out Surfer's AI Tracker. We'll drop a link in the description. If this video helped you avoid optimizing for the wrong version of ChatGPT, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe to the Surfer Academy YouTube channel if you want more data-backed insights on where search is heading. And if you want a full breakdown of how to rank an AI search in the first place, check out this video next. We cover everything from content structure to building the kind of authority that gets you cited by large language models. Thanks so much for watching and happy ranking.